Today's video is going to be on a common problem on these Uniden EOBT-595s. Unfortunately, this is not something that a DIYer is going to be able to fix because it requires advanced micro soldering. And what the problem is is that the two flex connectors that connects this top board and the bottom board down here end up warping. They also become brittle over time and stuff like that. And they no longer make a good contact and neither the board can communicate with each other so therefore the phone does not work and as you see I have it on the stand I do have a battery inside of it and it's not powering on or anything like that and that's because of that problem unfortunately unfortunately to make even matters worse with this particular phone is someone actually tried to repair it already and they end up just completely damaging that connector which I'll show you the damage that they did to it and so forth I was able to find two replacement connectors on DigiKey and stuff like that so off camera, I'm going to go to my JBC setup and I'm just going to go ahead and unsolder those and then resolder new connectors on there and hope that resolves the problem and gets this phone working again. But let me go and show you the damage before I go ahead and do that. Here's an inside view of this Unidin flip style home phone before I go and tear into it and show you what the problem is. And here you go, we'll look at the transceiver slash charging section of it. You can see there, and then there's a nice big shield there. There's the ribbon cable, and it's sandwiched in between this hinge mechanism right in there. And then it turns around and then connects this processing dash display board together. And here you go. Under it's actually the LCD, which I'll lift in a minute. So I'm going to go and lift these two boards out of this shell, and I'll go and show you where they did the damage to it. Here's the other side of the board flipped the other way around. I figure I'll go and do an overview just so you can see what's on the other side pretty much. And there's dome switches under there, which oh this this see how this rubber keypad there is no contacts on this just here simply pushes down on one of these domes right there, and that's what makes the contact. And they did that. It's so that way it's less susceptible for damage from the environment like dust or oils and stuff like that getting under there and stuff, and it's overall very reliable. Matter of fact, all the AT&T and VTech phones use this method pretty much nowadays, or at least most of them do. There's your color LCD, and it does have a connector that's under there where you can remove that if you want to. And here's the damage that I guess the last eBay seller, when probably trying to repair it, did to it because I brought this as is on eBay that it was not working. So I'm assuming he probably tried to have a go at it, and he used a flat beta tool to push on it really hard. And ended up damaging connect. You can even see that one right there is coming out there. So these two pieces here I am going to replace. I already did get them from DigiKey. So I'm just going to go and put new ones on there. And hopefully that will resolve the problem. And the phone should be working. Hopefully. You'll know if you've seen the video the phone's working or not. But there you go. And then here I'll give you a good one. And then there's the original battery right there. So overall I'm going to go ahead and put this under my... JBC pretty much in microscope and place those two connectors clean this phone up and hope that she does survive it so we'll see if there's any other problems with it pretty much so I went ahead and finished making repairs to this unit in home flip phone and thankfully they were successful as you can see it is currently powered on and it is charging the phone currently right now and thankfully the only thing that required was to have to replace those two connectors and to pretty much clean up the phone and so forth. Overall it is fully functional at least from what I can tell. The display works, speakerphone works, everything works on it. But unfortunately it is a common issue with these and a lot of the issues is with it is that you'll get when you get them they'll get the flashing light and that the phone won't power on all the way or just flash like something please wait and then go away real quick or it just won't power on at all and that's usually due to the connectors in there what happens is is that they deteriorate over time and then they don't make good contact to both the boards and so that's what caused the problem in this case here someone obviously knew about the problem and tried to fix it themselves and they just ended up damaging the connectors even more but Thankfully, I was able just to put two new connectors on there, and it's fully functional now and should be reliable now, and I'll probably just end up throwing in my collection anyway of oddball phones, but I'll go and do a quick demonstration of it. Unfortunately, the repairs to this is not going to be something most DIYers are going to be able to do because it does require a microscope and a good solder station skill in SMD soldering, micro soldering. Not something that everyone's going to be able to do, thankfully, because I am a phone tech, 
and I do work on iPhone boards and so forth, I'm used to this kind of stuff, so it's easy for me to repair. But let me go ahead and show you that it is fully functional. And here you go. And you can see there, that's the color display there. Here's the buttons. Pretty unique. We'll go ahead and just dial a number. Nine. Okay. This does have speakerphone too as well. So if you want to hit speaker, you just hit the side button. Go back, you just hit that and that's it. And then to end the car, you just hit there. Okay. And then you can end the car there. Let's just see if there's anything in there interesting. You got your Bluetooth function, so if you have your cell phone, you can actually link your cell phone to this and then use this instead of your cell phone to pick up card like as a hands-free type device. There you go, you got your settings there. That's just for answering machine and so forth. Let's just get back out of there. But overall, there you go, and there you go, because you see you could put either pick up the landline or you can pick up from your mobile cell phone and so forth. So it's pretty nice and unique. This was very advanced during its time. You can see, hold on, let me see if it focuses, but you can see the display there. Shows your battery level, time, and date, and so, which is not set, but don't care about that right now. And then let me go and demonstrate the loudness of the bass pretty much. You can see this bass really got good volume. Today is Friday, February 26th. The time is 3.13. Well, it's pretty loud, as you can see. So. Degrees. There you go. And then I actually push in on unit ends. I keep forgetting that. But there you go. She is fully functional. And this will probably go more likely in my collection of oddball phones because I like to collect oddball stuff like this. And this is one of those one-of-kind phones because they didn't make very much flip phones that were actually home phones like this. There was only like at least three of them that I know that were actually made. And these are becoming rare to find only because that common issue. And a lot of times they end up in the landfill and stuff like that. Because people don't even bother repairing them. They just throw them away. So you don't find any. And that's the reason why I repaired this one here. Because originally I was just trying to find another handset. But you can't find any other handsets for this. Because there's none available literally currently on eBay right now. Like I looked and the only other one that's available... The guy's asking 150 bucks for it, the whole entire system, which probably likely will have the same problem anyway, so I just decided to go and repair it. But overall, this concludes the video.